In the vast web of human migration and genetic ancestry, few threads are as perplexing as mitochondrial haplogroup X. Unlike other haplogroups with clear geographic trajectories, haplogroup X stands out as a mysterious genetic link connecting diverse populations across the Americas, Europe and the Middle East. Its presence in distinct and often isolated communities has sparked debates and speculations about ancient human migration and the intertwined history of our species. What secrets does haplogroup X hold, and why does it challenge traditional narratives of human dispersal? Mitochondrial DNA, inherited exclusively from the maternal line, serves as a powerful tool for tracing ancestry. Haplogroup X diverged tens of thousands of years ago from its closest relative, haplogroup N. However, unlike more regionally confined haplogroups in East Asia and the Americas, or in Europe, haplogroup X has a wide but enigmatic distribution. These findings challenge simplistic models of migration and highlight the intricate web of human history. Haplogroup X is divided into two major subclades, X1 and X2. X1 is primarily found in the Middle East and North Africa, while X2 has a broader reach spanning Europe, the Near East, and the Americas. The presence of X2 in Native American populations, particularly among the Algonquian-speaking tribes, is one of the most intriguing and mysterious aspects of this genetic story. The discovery of haplogroup X in Native American populations was first made during genetic studies aimed at tracing the origins of indigenous peoples. Unlike the more common Native American haplogroups, which are linked to migrations from Siberia via the Bering Land Bridge, haplogroup X presented a conundrum. Its genetic markers bore no direct connection to East Asian populations. Instead, haplogroup X2A, a unique subclade, was identified in Native American tribes such as the Ojibwe, Sioux, and Navajo, as well as some enigmatic ancient remains. Ancient DNA from remains such as Kennewick Man has confirmed the presence of haplogroup X2A, providing a genetic link to modern Native American populations. Kennewick Man, discovered in Washington State, represents one of the most significant ancient human remains ever found in the Americas. Radiocarbon dating places his age at approximately 8,400 years. Controversial studies of his skull morphology suggested a resemblance to populations outside of Native American groups, fueling controversies about his origins. However, advancements in genetic analysis have clarified the picture. DNA extracted from Kennewick Man revealed that he shares a direct genetic link with contemporary Native American populations, particularly those in the Pacific Northwest. Remarkably, his mitochondrial DNA belongs to haplogroup X2A, confirming its presence in ancient populations of the Americas and reinforcing its unique distribution. Its presence in the Pacific Northwest is very curious, because today it is found almost exclusively in northeastern tribes. Kennewick Man's world was a land of wild rivers, towering forests and harsh winters, an unforgiving place where only the strongest survived. He was a man of the land, an expert hunter and a warrior. His muscles were honed by the constant demands of survival, his spirit tempered by the challenges of an ancient world. He lived in the Pacific Northwest some 8,400 years ago, in a time long before written history, where survival meant mastering the terrain and outwitting predators. Kennewick Man's life was one of constant movement. He knew the land like the back of his hand, and his spear never wavered as he hunted game, each throw an echo of precision. The forests whispered secrets to him. The rivers were his map. But his was not an easy life. It was a life marked by conflict, fights over territory, disputes between tribes, and the constant struggle to survive against the elements. His bones told the story of this rugged existence, bearing the scars of a lifetime spent in conflict and survival. Indeed, his bones, once lost to time, spoke of a man who had lived through struggle, battle and survival. His injuries told of conflicts that had marked his life, and that he ate lots of salmon. Yet despite the violent world he had inhabited, there was no sign of death from those wounds. His injuries, deep and painful, had not claimed him. He had survived them as he had survived so much else in his life. Kennewick Man's life was one of survival against all odds. His injuries, embedded in his bones like chapters in an ancient book, speak of a warrior's life, marked by the violence of his time, but also by the resilience that defines humanity. In his death, as in his life, Kennewick Man left behind a story of struggle, strength and survival. 
reminding us that the past is not just a collection of bones, but a legacy of human endurance. Through the analysis of his bones and DNA, scientists were able to link his lineage to modern Native American populations, confirming that Kennewick Man was part of the first peoples to walk across the land that would become the Americas, but his life, his battles and his injuries would remain part of the deep, mysterious past of the continent. The findings from Kennewick Man provide critical evidence for the antiquity of Haplogroup X2A in North America. They also highlight the complex interplay of genetics, archaeology and anthropology in uncovering the stories of the first Americans. For many Native American cultures, the connection to ancestral spirits and ancient beings is woven into the fabric of the cosmos. The constellations play an important role in these cultural narratives, and one of the most significant stories centers around the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. Across many cultures, the Pleiades are associated with ancient beings or spirit guides who once walked the earth, but now reside among the stars. Interestingly, these stories often mention a missing or lost sister, a theme that resonates across Native American traditions, as well as with ancient myths from other cultures around the world. Among some Native American tribes, the Pleiades are seen as a group of ancestral sisters who lived on Earth before ascending to the sky. For the Navajo, the Pleiades are known as celestial figures that guide and protect. Similarly, the Iroquois tell of seven maidens chased by a bear who are then lifted to the sky. But always, one sister is missing, lost in the depths of space or hiding among the stars, a mystery that resonates with the missing pieces of our own ancient ancestry. The lost sister also symbolizes a human desire to reconnect with our origins, to understand the ancient beings that shaped us. The Pleiades' missing sister hints at a deeper connection that transcends genetic science, a bond that may be felt intuitively by those who view the night sky and see in its patterns a reflection of the mysteries of human ancestry. What sets Haplogroup X2A apart is its closest genetic relatives, which are not found in Siberia or East Asia, but rather in the Near Eastern Europe. This has led to speculation about an alternate migration route to the Americas, potentially involving transatlantic crossings or a now submerged landmass. Some researchers propose that Haplogroup X's presence in the Americas predates the arrival of other haplogroups, suggesting a migration wave as early as 20,000 years ago. In Europe, Haplogroup X2 is found at low frequencies, but is remarkably widespread. Populations in the eastern Mediterranean, particularly the Druze community, exhibit higher concentrations of this haplogroup. The Druze, a small ethnic group primarily located in modern-day Lebanon, Israel and Syria, are a genetic outlier, with over 25% of their population carrying haplogroup X. This high prevalence has made the Druze a focal point for studies on the haplogroup's origins and dispersal. In the Druze community, Haplogroup X is part of a broader genetic profile that reflects their long history of endogamy and cultural continuity. The high frequency of Haplogroup X among the Druze has made them a living genetic archive, offering insights into ancient human migrations and the genetic diversity of the Near East. In the Middle East, Haplogroup X1 is more common, though it remains a rare lineage. Its distribution overlaps with ancient trade routes and areas of early human settlement, suggesting that Haplogroup X may have been part of the genetic tapestry of early agricultural societies. Furthermore, the presence of Haplogroup X2 in ancient fossils from regions such as Anatolia and the Caucasus further reinforces its antiquity and its role in shaping human history in these regions. The widespread but sporadic presence of Haplogroup X has led to multiple hypotheses about its origins and migrations. One prominent theory suggests that Haplogroup X arose in the Near East around 30,000 years ago and later spread to Europe and the Americas. This timeline aligns with the Upper Paleolithic period, a time of significant human migration and cultural development. Ancient migrations to the Americas reveal a unique and curious mystery that has intrigued scientists, geneticists, and historians alike. When modern humans first emerged, their spread across the globe was a slow and arduous process. Migration into Europe and Asia involved tens of thousands of years of adaptation to unfamiliar environments. But something extraordinary happened when modern humans reached the New World. In a span of few millennia, modern humans expanded from the icy reaches of Alaska to the windswept plains of Patagonia, 
establishing thriving populations across 10,000 miles of diverse ecosystems. For much of the 20th century, the dominant theory of human migration to the Americas was straightforward. Sometime around 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, during the last ice age, small bands of hunter-gatherers crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia to Alaska. These groups then gradually spread southward through a so-called ice-free corridor in North America as glaciers receded, populating the rest of the Americas. However, discoveries in South America, human occupation dating back as far as 30,000 years, throw a wrench into this traditional narrative. If people were already thriving in South America long before the Ice Age ended, how did they get there? These findings demand a broader understanding of migration routes, challenging the idea that humans entered the Americas solely through the Bering Land Bridge. We need to look at the possibility of ancient seafaring during warmer periods, by island hopping along the Aleutian Island chain from Asia to the Americas. The introduction of Haplogroup X to the Americas remains a subject of intense debate. The absence of haplogroup X in Siberian populations challenges the Bering Land Bridge hypothesis as the sole route of entry for early Native Americans. Instead, some researchers propose a transatlantic migration route, drawing parallels to the Salutrin hypothesis, which suggests that ancient Europeans may have crossed the Atlantic via ice sheets during the last glacial maximum. While this theory remains controversial, it underscores the complexity of haplogroup X's history. Another possibility is that haplogroup X arrived in the Americas through coastal migration along the Pacific Rim. This would involve seafaring populations traveling from the Near East, navigating the coastlines and eventually reaching the Americas. Recent archaeological discoveries of early maritime cultures lend some credence to this idea, though concrete evidence linking haplogroup X to such migrations is still lacking. Archaeological evidence from sites such as Monte Verde in Chile, dating to around 18,500 years ago, supports this theory. Monte Verde's early settlement, complete with tools, hearths and plant remains, suggests that humans were already living in South America thousands of years before the ice-free corridor in North America would have been passable. This raises a baffling question. How did these early humans traverse thousands of miles of challenging terrain, including glaciers, mountains and dense forests, in such a short time? By 14,000 years ago, humans had reached the southernmost tip of South America, populating Patagonia and beyond. This rapid expansion, spanning the length of the Americas in just a few millennia, is unparalleled in human history. How did they manage to overcome the immense geographic and ecological challenges of such a journey? Nevertheless, the presence of haplogroup X in diverse populations raises intriguing questions about cultural interactions and shared ancestry. Among the Algonquian-speaking tribes, haplogroup X2A's distribution suggests a deep-rooted lineage that predates European contact. Oral traditions and archaeological findings hint at ancient connections between Native American groups and other regions, though these connections remain speculative. Advances in ancient DNA analysis have provided new tools for unraveling the mystery of haplogroup X. By sequencing the genomes of ancient remains, researchers have traced the lineage's movements across time and space. For example, haplogroup X has been identified in Neolithic remains from Europe and the Near East, linking it to early farming communities and the spread of agriculture. Despite decades of research, haplogroup X remains an enigma. Its broad distribution and ancient roots defy easy explanations, and its presence in the Americas continues to challenge established narratives of human migration. Future research, particularly studies combining ancient DNA with archaeological evidence, holds the promise of shedding new light on this genetic mystery. One area of interest is the potential role of environmental factors in shaping haplogroup X's distribution. Environmental changes, sea level fluctuations and glacial movements influenced human migration routes and settlement patterns, creating pathways for haplogroup X to spread across continents. Another promising avenue is the integration of cultural and linguistic studies with genetic data. By examining the correlations between haplogroup X and cultural practices, researchers may uncover new insights into the interactions and exchanges that shaped human history. Mitochondrial haplogroup X is more than a genetic anomaly. It is a testament to the complexity and interconnectedness of human history. 
Its presence in disparate regions, from the Americas to Europe and the Middle East, speaks to the resilience and adaptability of our ancestors. As science continues to push the boundaries of our understanding, Haplogroup X serves as a reminder that the story of humanity is far richer and more intricate than we have ever imagined. By unraveling the mysteries of this enigmatic haplogroup, we not only learn about our past, but also gain a deeper appreciation for the shared heritage that unites us all. A final note, commenting that Native Americans don't have any more claim to be native to the Americas fails to consider the unique relationship indigenous people have with their lands based on thousands of years of uninterrupted presence, stewardship, and cultural connection. Thus, are arguing that Native Americans aren't native because their ancestors migrated to the Americas is an illogical argument. Ancient migration patterns are part of human history, and virtually every population has moved and settled across different regions over time. Native Americans have profound, continuous, and culturally specific connections to their lands that go far beyond the simplistic idea of first arrival.